Hello. Welcome to the Tour of Pleasure here in the Enchanted Kingdom of Hermione. I am your host, Zip Gun. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, some CDs that came out a few years back that really, really blew my mind. I really like these. And they're sort of all of a piece. There's three different bands, but they're all roughly related. And these are what is loosely known as the Congotronics series. And they're the result of a guy named Vincent Kennens, Kennis, working for a label called uh, Crammed Discs, which if I remember correctly is a Belgian label. And he went to Kinshasa and started to document some of the street bands that exist in Kinshasa, which of course is a gigantic city, really big city. And there's a lot of sort of street bands there. And some of these street bands have overcome um, problems in the most wonderful and unusual ways. And um, they also tend to reflect their culture, but they also seem to bring their culture into modern times. And the first one of these I ever heard was, and probably a lot of people have seen this one, was Konono Number no. 1 is the band. And the record was just called Congotronics. And Konono Number no. 1 was a band of individuals largely playing electronic mbiras. And an mbira is like one of these things here. And uh, some people call it a thumb piano. Some people call it a kalimba. I always called it a kalimba. And they're really neat. Now that's a great sound, eh? Isn't that good? And you can you can kind of tune them by moving them around. Now, the problem is a band that features several mbiras and drums and vocals, drum kits made out of garbage, like out of refuse, basically. And they would play in the street. Well, as you might guess, Kinshasa's a big city. It's pretty freaking noisy. And so they couldn't be heard above the din. So they figured out a way to amplify these things. And they would go to the wrecking yard and the cars and whatnot, and they'd pull apart car starters and things, and they would make their own pickups that they would put under the bridge, and then they would play them through I, I don't know what, broken car stereos, I'm going to guess. Um, if you look at this photo here, there's one of their speakers. And um, they even made, apparently they even made their own microphones. And there's pictures of their microphones. I don't know if there's a photo of the microphone here. No, not really. But it's quite a large band. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. And this record was the beginning of a real love affair with this stuff. It is, needless to say, very repetitive, very hypnotic. Um, it sounds a lot like electronica. Um, and of course, they, they sing, there's many vocalists, there's many drummers, but the drum, there's actually a kit, drum kit. And like I say, it's made out of basically junk. There's a couple of bass mbiras that really, really add to this sound. And when this record came out, it was a bit of a hit on college radio. A lot of people got into it, myself included. And um, they followed it up with a record called Congotronics 2. And this was really, if you're going to go for any of these, I'd recommend this one because it's a various artist compilation. It has Kanona number one. It has uh, the Kasai All-Stars and then a whole bunch of other people. Plus, it comes with a DVD, and the DVD is really fascinating. There's a couple of just amazing performances on this DVD. Now, they're also on the CD, and uh, this provides with the the the, the Canona number one CD is a little bit how you say monodynamic, perhaps. This has different th things on it. Um, I think that's one of the bass bass imbiras. Um, but because some of these artists are from different parts of the Congo, like the Kasai All-Stars, I do believe, 
they have a certain tradition of balafone, like xyl uh, wooden xylophones. And um, there's always been a bit of a conflict between the Kasai, who are from um, South Central Congo, and um, the other people um, from near the, say, the Kinshasa area. Congo, of course, is a gigantic country. And, you know, the idea of there being Congolese people is kind of, you know, not really super accurate. Um, and so the Kasai All-Stars managed to put together all the elements of the culture of the Congo and um, as a sort of a way of uniting everybody in peaceful um, harmony, which is a great idea. And what's more, it sounds really great. And uh, so that one came out. The third one was Kanona Number no. 1 did a record called Assume Crash, Crash Positions. By this point, they were pretty much discovered by the West. And they would do, um, here's a great photo. They would do concerts all through Europe where they would play their, play their mbiras through like martial amps and stuff. So they kind of refined their sound. Um, here's live at the, at the cafe. This is not essential, but I bought it anyway. Um, and then there's, um, what's this one? And then there's this one. This is the most recent one that I know of where they um, collaborate with a DJ named Batida. Now, normally I don't like these. I don't like the idea of these at all. This one works. It's really good. Batida is actually really interesting. I don't didn't know anything about them when I bought this CD. Um, and it's sort of if you're if the if the first album is just a bit too pure for you, and it will be a bit too pure for some people. Um, this isn't a bad place to start. Um, I still think the Congotronics number two really is the place to start. It's a double. It's more expensive, but it's worth every nickel. Now, the Kasai All-Stars made um, a couple of CDs, and they got great titles. I love this title. In the seventh moon, the chief turned into a swimming fish and ate the head of his enemy by magic. Which is, you know, sure. Um, and the, this this is slightly more varied than the Kanona Number no. One band. They put out a second CD called "Beware the Fetish," and this is this might be their best one. It's a double CD. There's room for them to stretch out, and um, the balafones and the imbiras, and there's guitars, of course. All of these have guitars in them. Well, actually, I don't know if the Kanona Number no. One does. But a lot of these bands will have an obligatory African-style guitar player playing some of the most incredibly cheap guitars. Boy, you should see some of these. They don't often have bass guitars. The bass is provided by the bass and biras. And uh, it says here, play it loud. I highly re recommend playing it loud. It's really good loud. And it's just, it's it's like listening. It's I know, it reminded me of the Aphex Twin kind of, but, but you know, organic and... and and uh, and uh, just otherworldly. I just I never heard anything like it before. And the last one I want to pull out is a band called, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Staff Benda Belili. And Staff Benda Belili is a different thing altogether. Staff Benda Belili was a group of handicapped people in Kinshasa. Some of them are paraplegics, and they all live rather communally. There's a good picture of where they live. They live on the grounds of the Kinshasa Zoo. And they live, they're pretty much homeless, I would guess, or at least they were. And they would get together and they would make music in a various, various um, sort of styles. Um, there's one guy who plays just like a what do they call it? I think in Mississippi they call it a diddly bow. Like it's like, but he plays it like Jimi Hendrix. It's just great. And uh, this this band has elements of all the other ones, but they're um, slightly more urban. They've toured America, from what I understand. 
And uh, this one is a little bit different than the other ones, also on Cram Disc, Vincent Kinnis. Um, and to be honest, I haven't kept up with this. For all I know, there's more that have come out recently. But I'll tell you what, if you're looking for something new, and if you're a fan of world music like I am, you will just love this stuff. It is, it is wonderful music. Um, it is the, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, which caused them to make these instruments and modernize them and amplify them. Of course, the, the, in, in amplifying them, they overdrive the hell out of the amplifier, so it distorts. So it's really, there's a rock and roll kind of feel to it. Um, you know, there's dirt in it. And uh, it adds an immediacy that's uh, just amazing. And um, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend them highly enough. The worst record in here, what would that be? Maybe the live at the cafe is still, you know, if you find it in a thrift store, buy it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, they're worth, I paid full price for all of these and not a nickel misspent. Um, fabulous stuff. I hope to hear more from Africa like this. Um, I tend to like it before they get discovered because like I say, then they discover Marshall amps and they kind of play up to the European tourist a bit. Um, but in their unadulterated pure form, they're amazing. It's just really amazing music. I can't recommend it highly enough. So thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, look after each other. COVID's almost over. And uh, leave comments. Even if you think I'm a moron, I like those. If you think I'm a moron, it's great. Make sure there's lots of spelling mistakes in them. And um, we'll talk to you later about something else. Thanks.